first of all, thank you for organizers to invite us to uh, this great conference. It's a really pleasure to be here. I'm an interventional cardiologist from Moscow and involved in an interventional stroke treatment program in Moscow. Uh, the topic of my presentation, uh, can we extend the time window for mechanical thrombectomy? This is my potential conflict of interest uh, due to educational program and uh, education, uh, investigational program. So it is well known from, uh, from uh, animal studies and from uh, human stroke studies that the growth rate of, of uh, core uh, can be different in a different indi in, uh, individuation because uh, sometime even after two hours uh, we can have a very big core and we are too late to do intervention. But in the vast majority of cases, after two hours, we have a very small core and we can do intervention. During time, uh, the core is, of course, uh, grows, but even after six hours, we can uh, have a very small core volume. And even after 24 hours, we, uh, theoretically, we can have patient with small core volume. From diffuse to study, we are now that uh, growth rate of infarction for the 30, uh, nearly 30 uh, of patients with stroke is less than two milliliters per hour. Theoretically, we can have patients for mechanical thrombectomy even after 24 hours. But what about uh, evidence base? Uh, at this moment, uh, we have data from uh, 10 large randomized controlled studies. Uh, what majority of them uh, support benefit of mechanical thrombectomy within six hours window, uh, but last of them support uh, benefit within 24 hours window. But my question is, can we treat the patient outside 24 hours window? Uh, this uh, paper was published just uh, three months ago. The psychoctors uh, reported 21 patients who was treated with mechanical thrombectomy outside 24 hours therapeutic window. And they use don't study selection criteria. You can see on this slide, the time from last well known, it was from 24 to 155 hours from last well known. And this is the result. The clinical outcome was almost the same than in don't trial. Uh, the percent of patients with modify, modi uh, modified ranking scale from 0 to 2 at 3 months was 43%, with low rate of symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage and mortality rate. And I would like to present uh, our cases of thrombectomy beyond conventional 24 hours window. This is re real, our real life. It was uh, the first case, uh, it was 78 years old female. The symptom onset was at eight uh, at the moment with face asymmetry, vision disturbance, and right sided weakness. Uh, her relatives uh, released snort speech at uh, nearly 12.30, uh, call for ambulance, and the uh, patient was directed to our comprehensive stroke hospital. She admitted to our hospital nearly after five hours after symptom onset, but during uh, initial neurological examination, we saw improvement, and at the moment of the CT, no symptoms. NIH uh, stroke scale was zero. On plain CT, as you can see, absolutely normal. Aspects was 10, but at the CT angiography, we saw tandem lesion, tandem occlusion. ICA occlusion and digital MCA occlusion. But even after CT scan, our patient was completely asymptomatic, no symptoms. And uh, after that, for next 27 hours, she was completely asymptomatic. At the day two in the evening, uh, clinical duration was occurred, mild motor aphasia and mild right-sided hemiparesis five uh, points on the NIH stroke scale. We repeat uh, MRI. This is a, a DWI image. You can see the uh, ischemic change. We, uh, also T2 and flare. And also we perform CT perfusion. Uh, we see hyperperfused area without evidence of core. 
you can see on uh, time maps, uh, Tmax, uh, mid transit time, uh, time to peak change, but uh, no mismatch between uh, volume and flow. At the end of examination, uh, NH was only two. We decide don't uh, give power patient to cat lab uh, uh, because we decide this is a chronical type of occlusion. But at day three, we see the clinical deterioration, total aphasia, right side hemiplasia, and now an age to scroll was 12. Our decision was immediately to the cat lab. On the right side, you can see the image from the cat lab. And this is the image three days before at admission, the same occlusion. We put out our micro catheter uh, and uh, make a distal injection so that the occlusion site is a little bit higher and the typical situation. We try to make aspiration with a 68 catheter. It was unsuccessful, but, but, I tried to press the button. Okay, thank you. Uh, but now we can see the very long thrombus, very long. Several passes was done, aspiration only, combination of aspiration and stent trivial, stent trivial alone without any success. But after uh, such passes, our thrombus uh, become more shorter and maybe more compact. And we decide to open our stent trivial at the distal part to fix uh, apex to the arterial wall and use our stent trivial as a maybe as a distal protection device, and during aspiration, we put our guiding catheter up and pull out guiding catheter with stent river and thrombus simultaneously. You can see the clinical result. It was not a chronic atherosclerotic lesion. It was just a, a thromboembolus. This is the coach thrombus. Uh, and then we figure the problem uh, for intracranial circulation, aspiration for M1, for M1 segment, and uh, aspiration by a micro catheter, 3 max, for M2. This is the final angiographic result. It was pretty good. Uh, MRI. This is the DWR image next time, uh, next day after thrombectomy. And the clinical outcome was modified ranking scale 3 at hospital discharge, but after three months, no speech disorders. I can work in without any assistant and modify for ranking scale was two. I would like to underline. Our intervention was done 72 hours after the symptom onset and after tandem lesion detection. It was our mistake to wait for 72 hours. The next case, uh, it was called in the middle of the night, it, uh, about uh, 27 years old female. Unfortunately, 24 hours was passed after the symptom onset. It was a really ill patient, 18 uh, points by an age stroke scale, aphasia, right sided hemiplasia. Uh, this is the image bring from a uh, uh, non comprehensive stroke hospital. You can see the ischemic change on GWR image. Also, they fire out the huge thrombus in the internal carotid artery, the proximal part. They repeat uh, MRI after 29 hours after the symptom onset. They saw the enlargement of uh, ischemic lesion. And our decision was to transfer our patient immediately immediately to the cat lab. We skip in our hospital any unnecessary examination, uh, tomography, etc. So here you can see the image, uh, cat lab image, the huge thrombus is approximately part of uh, internal carotid artery. Uh, uh, last half, uh, half year, we uh, perform ultrasound for proximal occlusion to understand uh, the region of occlusion site. It's very important because uh, we can see that. Uh, can you come to the next slide? Thank you. We see very heterogeneous thrombus, very fragile. It is very, uh, very difficult to don't, don't touch him. Our decision was to don't cross the thrombus by micro to make aspiration. Uh, we're using 
balloon guarding catheter, our balloon guarding catheter, nice French balloon guarding catheter. Uh, we put it uh, close to the thrombus, open balloon, and make an aspiration. The uh, angiography result you can see on the right side of the slide was pretty good, but uh, on the ultrasound we saw small, very small thrombus fixed to the arterial wall. This is intracranial circulation without large vessel occlusion. One next day after thrombectomy, small thrombus was still here, but not occlusive. The next problem was femoral artery thrombosis, two days after. The next slide, please. Can you push? Thank you. Uh, it was it was uh, fixed by open surgery. Uh, this is the thrombus from the femoral artery thrombus. Also, pull out the angiocele, and we find out three gen mutation. It was a thrombophilic patient. Thank you. 3 gene mutation. And the clinical outcome of intervention was pretty good. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, after two months, uh, no speech disorders. Uh, now she had problem with only one finger. Just only one finger in the modi 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 modified ranking scale now is just one. At the conclusion, uh, a lot, a bit, okay. a lot of stroke patients with emergent large occlusion now remain untreated because they present beyond the conventional 24 hours therapeutic video uh, window, and for the selected patient. Uh, uh, the endovascular procedure can be effective and beneficial even if done beyond the 24 hours after the symptom onset. Uh, maybe it's time to shift from a simple time-based patient selection paradigm to physiology-based selection paradigm uh, to the, by identifying potentially salvageable uh, brain tissue. And of course, we need uh, randomized control studies uh, to clarify the collection criteria for patient outside outside uh, 24 hours therapeutic window thank you for your attention